Hey guys, today we are continuing our exploration of Ableton versus Reason. If you haven't seen the last video I did on that topic, we looked at the sequencer and the main differences between the two softwares in relation to that. Today we're looking at the recording functionality of Reason and Ableton and the differences there. Spoiler alert, I prefer the functionality that Reason has in this area, however, Reason is still missing some very crucial things that Ableton has, um, basically just the ability to punch and record, mainly just that. That's what, that's what Reason needs. I recorded this beat, or I made this beat, that goes something like this. You know, I just threw it together quickly. Don't judge. And then laid down this, laid down this quick vocal. I wrote some inspired lyrics for this. Um, have a listen. I hope you appreciate the pun, the puns. How do you know which door to use? Are you able to know the choice? Give me a reason to choose. Okay, so once we're in reason, we have three different edit modes up here. When we click on a audio clip, we've got three different edit modes. We need to go to comp edit first. So when we go to comp edit, these are the three different takes I did. I just looped it, recorded it, looping it, and so now I've got three takes. The last one has nothing in it, but if we click on this first one here, we, if we turn that off first of all and click on this first one here, here's the first take we did. Let's make that a little bigger. How do you know which door to choose? Are you able to narrow the choice? Give me a reason to choose. There's my, my vocal. I just have to click on this to get to the second take. How do you know which door to use? Are you able to narrow the choice? I sang the wrong word in that last one there, so that's a bad take. If I want to delete, I can just delete. Click on a click on a take and delete it. So now I'm left with my three takes that I was working on. Make it a little bigger. How do you know which door? So then here's my third take here. How do you know which door to use? Are you able to narrow the choice? Give me a reason to choose. So I mean this is this is a very quick basic melody, but let's say that I want to use this part of this one here. I get my razor tool, I can either click on it there, um, and now select this this part here. Or if I get my razor tool and just click immediately on the one that I want, it's gonna cut there. So now I'm jumping between two different takes and reason is clearly showing me that. It also does this thing that I found recently that if you hold down command and shift, you give me a reason to choose. And then click it plays just the clip. That's a real handy feature. Give me a reason to choose. I don't really like that one at all, so I'm just gonna ignore it. Once I've done that, I can also cut some silence in here. That's gonna give me some silence at the top, so when I'm not singing here, and maybe when I'm not singing at the end, I can just cut in the silence. And everything that I'm doing here in this comp edit mode is being reflected up the top here in my final take. So you'll notice if I select this channel here now, that changes what is showing up in my final take. Uh, but I don't want that channel. And if I want to crossfade, I can just grab this cursor thing here and drag that out. Like that. Um, that's probably more useful if I was kind of going in between a word. This word here. Let's say I want to use that one there. I can just drag out like that. Are you able to narrow the choice? Um, but yeah, I don't want to use that. So if I delete it, I can do that. So now that we've kind of comped our three sections together, I can hit bounce, and that creates a new channel here from what I comped. And if I click off that, it's going to go back to my to my comp. So then the other two edit modes that we have in Reason. Uh, slice edit mode. So if I need to kind of move something around rhythmically, 
that's where I do that. Ableton gives you far more control with like sliced edit features, I think. Um, Ableton is definitely superior in that department, but here's how you do it in Reason. It kind of does it within the clip, within the sequencer, as opposed to having its own window down the bottom. But the other edit mode is pitch edit. This is something that Ableton doesn't have at all, I don't think, which is a built-in auto-tune Melodyne type, type function. So we can see it here. How do you know which door do you... So if I want to highlight everything I can, I can hit correct, and that's going to jump it all in. How do you know which door to use? Some of these notes were not good. Which... How do you know... How do you know which door to use? Are you able to narrow the choice? Give me a reason to choose. So you can highlight it all. You can go, um, oh, you can grab these handles here. These handles control the settings at the top. So if I kind of drag it down like that, that's just gonna decrease the range of pitch variability. How do you know which door to you? And you can like flatten it though completely, you know. How do you know which door? Which may not sound natural. And then these ones here are the the kind of crossfades for the pitch. How do you know which? These little handles down the bottom. Crossfades for the pitch. How do you know? Um, you know, let, let's say I want to kind of control that. I can just go in here, control that, and then. Correct that. Control that a little bit more. How do you know which door to use? Are you able to narrow the choice? And so within that as well, you can, can change uh, formant level, fine tune. If I wanted to change the, the formant of say this note, I can just drag that down. How do you know which door? That's this kind of cool. How do you know which door? Alas, I do not want to sound like that. How do you know which door to use? Are you able to narrow the choice? So yeah, that's that's how you record and comp vocals in Reason. I really like the features here. Now we're gonna try and do the same thing in Ableton. We'll see. What what's good over there? All right, so here's my Ableton project. Um, I bounce the audio from my Reason project and just drags it in here. Okay, so I did the same thing. I recorded three takes on a loop in Ableton. You can see where the audio stops. So if I just um, drag this clip out, so I have a full clip now. Let's have a listen. So here's my first take, and in Ableton, I've got this inspector window thing down here, uh, yeah. Now, if I zoom out, you can see that actually, here are all of my other takes, my three takes. Here's take one, here's take two, and here's take three. So rather than recording the comps above or below each other, like Reason does, it records the comps in a line, okay? So, if I drag this out, if I drag this out now, I can see like both of them, but I don't want to see both of them, I just want to see one, so now I'm looking at, now I'm looking at one. That's how we select a different take in Ableton, we use these, these markers here. That is a more complex way of doing it. Now, if we turn the loop button on, we can select this one and it drags the whole thing over. So now I have my, my second take here in the audio. Now if I drag this over again, I have my first take. So let's let's have a listen to, to that and we'll see what the first take sounds like. Alright, let's have a listen to the second take. Let's have a listen to the third take. I think I like the first take the best. 
choice. But choice wasn't so great. Okay, number three will be the best choice. So if I go back up to this first one, and I want to select just the word choice. Alright, so I'm going to separate that clip there. So now I click on that clip, and I zoom out down here, and I can see that just choice is highlighted. So now I can go select this choice. Oh no, I wanted the third choice, didn't I? Starting on beat 4 2 it needs to start. I'm just making sure that I've got everything lined up correctly because it doesn't sound like I do. And nope, coming in a bit too soon, so that one needs to be there. Yeah, there we go. So now I have this clip here, which is now only playing up until that break. Then I have this break clip, which is playing from there but just the highlighted part and then now I have this third clip which which is playing from there and I can crossfade within the sequencer in Ableton so I can uh, um, drag the clip out like that get the crossfade happening and uh, if I want silence in Ableton I can just you know deactivate parts of the clip like that. Alright, this is uh, this is Matt from the future coming in. I finished recording the video and I discovered something that I overlooked. So, uh, talking about this clip here in Ableton when we said we are able to cut the clip I was mentioning how we use this thing to drag it around and, and find bits of it Yes, we can, but if we have loop mode turned on, we can actually grab the whole loop region and then as we get into the next loop, it automatically moves that bit. So you don't have to get in there on like a manual level and find the right beat to line it up. That makes life a whole lot easier. So you can see as I'm jumping between the loops, as this loop region moves onto the second lot or the second take, that highlighted bit, the bit in the clip we're using, actually jumps along. That's probably what we want to be doing, using the loop region. And same thing here. If, we, if we've got this this first take, um, like I did here, I probably should put that loop region over it, like that. Now, if I move the loop region. I get that same part. And that's, that's actually probably good to notice as well because I had, if I, if I turn loop off and move my loop region back here like that, you'll notice that as I pull this loop region back over, it catches that bit. And now it drags it into the right one. That's cool. That's cool. I really like that. So yeah, all right, back back to uh, back to past Matt with wherever he was up to with the tutorial. All right, so you can comp in Ableton, however, it is it's nowhere near as effective as doing it in Reason. And once I've done this, like that's basically all I can do in terms of pitch correction, unless I have an external plugin that does it. Um, as far as I'm aware, Ableton doesn't have any built-in pitch correction, so uh, there's that, yeah. So anyway, that is a brief comparison between the recording and comping features of Reason and Ableton. Thanks for checking out this video guys, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, hit that button, give the video a like, let me know what you think about recording in either Ableton or Reason, which do you prefer and why? Like, I can see how this Ableton system like maybe has some benefits in terms of like looping and sequencing, but if you're doing actual takes of a vocal or recording some instruments, I feel like Reason is better from a comping perspective. However, the big thing letting Reason down right now is it doesn't have a punch in, which is really annoying. So, 
Yeah, let me know what you think in the comments below. If you haven't seen my first comparison between Ableton and Reason, you can check out that video here in the corner, corner, corner. Yeah, let me know if there are any other aspects of Reason and Ableton that you want me to look at and compare. Because I've been finding it really interesting checking them out. But uh, yeah, until next time guys, I'll catch you later. How do you know which door to use? Are you able to narrow